This week on Cole's Ants, two colonies go head to head in the ultimate showdown. <laughs> okay, let me explain. At the beginning of this year, I introduced two new colonies that I have been completely enthralled with. One has been the source of endless entertainment with their weird behaviors, and the other are a bunch of feisty warriors that have managed to come back from the brink of extinction. Back in March, they both had exactly 12 workers and have been growing their forces over the last few months. But before we watch this arms race unfold, I need to set the stage and give some context about their natural rivalry. So let's meet our two opposing factions on a species level. In the first corner, we have Novomesser Coccarelli, commonly known as the Desert Long-Legged Ant. Recognized by their elongated bodies, spider-like legs, distinctive spines, and reddish-brown color, their colony name, the Raiders of Arrakis, ruled by their queen, the Duchess of Dune. In the other corner, we have Pogonomermix rugosus, commonly known as the Rough Harvester Ant, built more like stumpy little dwarves with boxy heads. They mainly eat seeds and wield a painful sting, their colony name, the Bulldozers, ruled by Queen Barley. Most ants are generalists, eating a variety of different food sources. Sure, some species are specialized to live off particular foods like seeds, sugar, or meat. But when it comes down to it, food is food. And when resources are scarce, you'll eat whatever you can. After all, the colony must grow. So while some Pogonomermic species can live exclusively on seeds, and Novomesser coccarelli can live entirely off insects, Pogonomermix rugosus use insect protein to feed their growing larvae, and Novomesser coccarelli will take advantage of seeds when food is hard to find. Both species are native to the arid regions of the southwestern United States and northern Mexico, and that overlap in habitat and diet breeds competition. But this rivalry isn't just manufactured for the sake of a story. In the wild, these two species are actually at odds. In fact, Novomesser workers will set out early in the morning and fill the entrances of nearby Pogonomermix nests with sand, pebbles, and debris before they have a chance to begin their daily activities. This delays the pogos by one to three hours, giving the novos a head start on foraging for seeds and insects. So this is war, an actual simulation of the arms race that would occur in nature to outgrow and outcompete the other colony to become ruler of the desert. And with that context, the battle begins on March 19th, 2025, with both armies having 12 workers and a big pile of brood. Their numbers are about to take off. Two weeks have passed, and it's time to see if one of them has taken the lead. It looks like the bulldozers have nearly doubled their numbers, from 12 to 22, and still have a good pile of brood. The Raiders of Arrakis now have 18 workers, a little behind, but judging by their impressive brood pile, I'd say they could definitely make a comeback. There is something else to report. I found a dead worker in the Raiders' outworld. And I also found a dead worker in the Bulldozers' outworld. I'm not sure why both colonies have lost a worker, but it's something to keep an eye on. The Raiders' water source is very small, and I'm noticing a little discoloration, so I've given them a fresh test tube and moved the cover. Hopefully, that'll convince them to move into the clean setup. A few days later, and they haven't moved out of the old tube. They've instead decided to just occupy both tubes. Not exactly what I had in mind, but I guess that's fine. A week later, and fortunately there were no dead bodies. The harvesters had gained two more recruits, but the long legs had gained six. Now putting the score at 23 to 24. I also noticed that the raiders had moved a bunch of dirt towards the back of the enclosure, creating these little hills. The bulldozers were also doing a lot of digging, although they didn't seem to be making any uh, visible progress. No, despite their name, they don't seem to be very good diggers at all, really. Maybe that's why the strategy of filling in their nests is so effective. The following week held some interesting developments in the battle for the desert. The raiders of Arrakis had completely terraformed their entire setup, excavating all the sand to the back of the outworld. Why? I have no idea. But this was no small undertaking. They had also been busy turning the- ah! They had also been busy turning the tide, because for the first time, they have surpassed the bulldozers, 
putting the score at 27 to 24. The war was heating up. There were also casualties on the battlefield. Both sides had suffered losses. Three dead for the Raiders, and an alarming five dead for the Bulldozers, which is why they've remained at 24. But that wasn't the only bad news to report. This was the first time that either colony hadn't touched their food. Something was wrong, but I couldn't figure out what. Nothing else had changed. See here how this worker is acting drunk? That probably means she's dying. I had to start troubleshooting, going through the various possibilities to find the issue. To start, I gave the bulldozers a fresh clean tube as well, in case it had something to do with their tube. Some people might look at these setups and just see a bunch of ants aimlessly moving around and occasionally eating some food. But there is a lot going on when you stop to look. They are organized, coordinated, and busy. Each colony is a well-oiled machine working to raise an actual army. Because in the wild, these two species wouldn't be safeguarded by these plastic tubs. They might have to go to war with other colonies or succumb to the many dangers of the desert. As the weeks rolled on, I had some time to experiment with different solutions. I can't say that I've identified the cause of the mysterious deaths, but the frequency has decreased, and they have continued to eat. The desert has been claiming about one long-legged ant a week, which isn't good, but it's still an improvement. And in five weeks, the bulldozers have only lost two workers. The bulldozers are so weird and different from my other ants. You think, oh, food appears, and they should all work together to break it down and carry it back to the nest, right? Not really. As you can see here, they initially come over to check it out, but then leave this worker to do it all herself. Then when reinforcements do finally show up, they aren't always helpful, like this little genius just attacking the dish. An inspiring demonstration of the collective intelligence of their species. A shining example of the supportive and collaborative nature of these amazing insects. A testament to the astounding design that you get the idea. They're dumb. She's even shaking the dish around. Meanwhile, the raiders are like, fresh food? All right, let's get to work. Fast forward over a month, and the bulldozers have not had a single death. Whatever was causing them to die seems to have run its course. Unfortunately, that's not the case for the raiders, who are continuing to lose workers at an unsettling rate of two to three deaths a week. Despite their losses, they are miraculously still increasing in number and continue to hold the lead. But not by much. The bulldozers are just a few workers behind now. I need to take action and try to stop whatever's killing them. I believe that there may be a clue in the fact that they moved all of their dirt away from the entrance of their nests. Perhaps there's something harmful in the sand they're trying to avoid. I think my best course of action is to move them into a new setup, and I have a formicarium that I've been saving just for them. But we'll save that for next time, as the story of the ants marches on. If you enjoyed this story, drop a like and check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching.